celestial mystery. They are messengers from deep space itself, time machines from the early universe. Comets could unlock the deepest secrets of our cosmos. If we can establish a correlation between amino acids on comets and life on Earth, that would be one of the most significant findings in, uh, in science. They threaten our very survival. We were talking about something the size of a mountain. So the amount of energy that this thing would release upon impact is devastating. Yet without comets, we might not be here. We may owe a great cosmic debt to comets because they may have been responsible for bringing the chemicals that we require for life to the Earth. dramatic streak of light across the sky, a passing comet is an astonishing sight. They're beautiful, these fuzzy glowing balls with the tail coming off. It's really something. You just don't get to see an object like that very often. Comets are extraordinary. If you get to see a comet for the very first time, it'll stick with you forever. The journey of a comet as it sails through the solar system is the most fantastic of all astronomical objects. It loops in toward the sun from the depths of space, an odyssey that can last millions of years. Many pass by the Earth so often, they're almost like old friends. Every comet is a frozen mass of rock and ice several miles across. But all we see is a glowing ball of light and a long, sweeping tail. Yet comets are more than cosmic fireworks. They could help unlock some of the deepest mysteries in science. We're trying to figure out as scientists where we came from. And, and that means everything from the beginning of the universe to the beginning of the solar system to how life started. Comets really fit into that. They really give us clues about how the solar system formed. If we can't understand comets, we don't understand how we got here. Comets may even be the source of life itself. We may owe our existence to the fact that comets billions of years ago came to Earth and, and brought the necessary ingredients for life. They can also cause enormous destruction. Comets could kill us all. If a comet were to hit the Earth, watch out. It would be a planet buster. It would be an object sufficient to wipe out all life as we know it on the planet. Learn about comets, and just maybe we will learn how to survive them and begin to understand how the universe works. When we study them, we're learning what the solar system was like when it was first forming. And we can learn about what other solar systems were like as well. And hopefully that will teach us a tremendous amount about how stars form and how planets form and, and how comets themselves were originally formed. Comets date back to the birth of our solar system four and a half billion years ago. They were made by the same force that created the solar system, gravity. It began in a maelstrom of chaos. A giant cloud of gas and dust collapsed to form a whirling disk. Close to the sun, it was burning hot. 
but further out, it was cool enough for gas clouds to condense and freeze. Ice crystals fused with grains of dust. They slowly pulled together into larger and larger masses. Over time, these sort of snowballed, like a snowball rolling downhill, picking up more and more and more material. Eventually, they formed gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn. But not all the debris in the disk turned into planets. Trillions of lumps of dirty ice were left behind, the comets. You could almost think of comets as sort of the frozen leftovers of the, uh, the formation of the solar system. They are almost unchanged to this day. They're pristine time capsules, and if you could crack one open and see what was inside, you could literally see what the solar system was first made out of. That's remarkable. But the comets did not stay put. Several hundred million years later, the solar system plunged into turmoil once again. Encounters with debris pulled the gas giants out of position. The giants' immense gravity then hurled comets in every direction, flinging trillions of tons of material from the dawn of the solar system into the cold outer reaches of space. Some comets settled in a region 4,000 million miles from the sun, the Kuiper Belt. But most were tossed even farther out to form a giant sphere around the entire solar system. We call it the Oort Cloud. This is a region of our solar system that's farthest away from the sun. The sun is just a tiny little dot, one of many stars. And the whole area of space around you is virtually empty. There's nothing there, very little. And just occasionally you'll find the odd comet floating out there in deep freeze, cold, dark, and very much alone. In this remote ice cloud, there are more than a trillion comets. They can take millions of years to orbit the sun. But they don't always stay here. The orbit of every comet is a delicate gravitational balance. The smallest nudge can tip the scale. Most comets spend their entire lifespan billions of miles from the sun motionless, inert, simply waiting for something to happen. But then, perhaps, a random collision takes place. Perhaps a passing star nudges it. And then the gravitational force of the sun inevitably pulls it toward the inner solar system. Gravity, the force that created the comets, then flung them to the edge of the solar system, now pulls them back in. Our comet begins its epic odyssey to spread life, or death, across the solar system. More than a trillion comets circle the sun at the frozen edges of our solar system. But many do not stay here. The smallest gravitational disruption can knock them out of their orbit. It could be a nearby star going by. It could be us going through a denser part of the galaxy. Anything that just gives a little gravitational hit to a comet can cause it to fall in towards us. Our comet has been disturbed. Now the sun's immense gravity takes over. You can think of the gravity of our solar system sort of like being a hillside. At the bottom, there's the sun, and comets are way at the top of that hill. When they get dislodged, there's only one way for them to go. They have to fall down in towards the sun. Our comet accelerates towards the sun, but its path is far from straight. Gravity from the planets can throw comets off course or out of the solar system completely. If they escape these obstacles, comets continue their journey toward the sun. Now they begin 
one of the most remarkable transformations known to science. A chrysalis to a butterfly. They, they become the most spectacular things the universe has to offer. As it passes Jupiter, our comet begins to change. As it starts to move a little bit faster and starts getting closer and closer to the sun, and it starts feeling the heat of the sun, that's when things really start to change. Five hundred million miles from the sun, heat brings our comet to life. Frozen gases start to vaporize. Grains of ice and dust rise from the surface. As the comet continues to approach the sun and gets warmer, more and more gas is released. The comet becomes a fuzzy ball. There's a solid part in there, but it's surrounded by a much larger sort of cloud of material. This cloud of dust and gas forms an atmosphere or coma around the comet. And it also creates the comet's huge tail. It's all driven by the sun and it's not over yet. There's something called the solar wind. It's actually a huge wave of charged particles originating from the sun. This fills our solar system, and as a comet begins to move further and further in towards the sun, the solar wind gets stronger. Like a cosmic hurricane, the solar wind blasts gas molecules from our comet out into space. They form a second giant tail. The solid part of the comet might only be a few miles across, and the fuzzy part might be a few thousand or tens of thousands of miles across. The tail that gets swept back as that material is blown off by the solar wind can be millions or tens of millions of miles long. Our comet hurtles through space at 50,000 miles an hour. It's about to enter the most violent phase of its journey. 200 million miles from the sun, water ice begins to vaporize. The ground would start to shift and quake, and as the material beneath my feet is literally thawing, we'd have great big jets of carbon dioxide and water ice starting to come out, and that would not be a very good place to be standing. The surface cracks open. Gases explode. Debris fires in all directions. The force of these eruptions makes the comet tumble erratically. Every jet that turns on is literally like a little jet engine attached to the comet. Like a dragster on a racetrack, our comet explodes to life. Incredible speed, irresistible energy, and a vast plume of debris. Our comet transforms into a cosmic hot rod, but speed and energy are a volatile mix. Our comet could blow apart at any moment. The cloud around our comet is now bigger than Jupiter. Its tail stretches for a hundred million miles. An object 4.5 billion years old emerges from the dark. Every arrival of a new comet is like a gift from the universe. We've never seen this little bit of the solar system before. This little building block, this little baby picture, it's completely new to us. It's a chance to study the origin of our solar system. And what we're learning is a revelation. Comets are far more hostile and alien than we imagined. <laughs>